You don't need a written estate plan if you happen to like the one that your state of residence provides for you and your family. In the absence of the estate plan, state law is going to step in and make all the decisions on how your assets are distributed when you do pass away. Who would want to do that? If you have considerable property or even just a few valuable things, setting up an estate plan to distribute your assets after your death is important. In fact, estate planning is giving what you have to whom you want, the way you want, and when you want with the least amount of taxes and expenses possible. You have several estate planning options available to you, but the most common are wills and trusts. There are pros and cons of wills and trusts to help you make an informed decision about which estate planning method is right for you. A will is a legally binding declaration by a person that after his death, his estate will distribute his assets in a specific way. The benefit of a will is that typically creating one is easier and less expensive than trusts. Revoking a will is also simpler and easier than revoking a trust. Wills, however, come with their own problems, such as estate taxes, and that they have to be probated, which means a court must supervise the distribution of the assets. This makes the process more time-consuming. Plus, the court documents are public records, so anyone can see how your estate was distributed. In addition, your will doesn't take effect until you're dead, which means that you can't use a will to name someone to, to, to take care of you if you're incapacitated. You need to draw up other documents to do that. A trust is a pool of assets held for the benefit of a third party called a beneficiary. A trustee oversees a trust's disposition to the beneficiary. You can create a trust by establishing one in your will, or you can create a trust while you're still alive called a living trust or intervivals trust. The property in a trust remains in the trust until some specified event occurs, such as your death or the beneficiaries reaching a certain age. When you create a living trust, you can also be the trustee. You can set up a trust for specific purposes such as to pay for the child's education or to provide donations to a charitable organization. Using a living trust allows you to pass your property to your heirs without going through probate. This typically allows for faster distribution than wills, especially in states with complex probate codes, and also maintains the privacy of your state. Finally, your trust documents are effective immediately, so you can include things like end-of-life directives and who should act as your guardian in the event that you're incapacitated. The downside of a trust is that creating the trust does take some time, effort, and money. If you create a living trust, you have the added complication of managing the property during your lifetime and designating a trustee to handle the property after your death. The biggest difficulty with trusts is getting them set up. Trusts generally have higher preparation costs than wills and require you to retitle your assets in the name of the trust. If you don't retitle your assets, those assets won't pass through the trust and instead will go through probate. In addition, Trusts don't offer any special asset protection. Your creditors can still get assets in your revocable trust. Over the past decade, estate exemption amounts has varied from $600,000 to unlimited. When the government keeps changing the rules, it's hard to plan ahead when you don't know what the rules are. This arbitrary number called exclusion amount that the Congress and the President pulls out of thin air is when the total value of the estate fall under the threshold amount, no estate tax. If you tip over it, then subject to tax. Here's an interesting fact. George Steinbrenner, a former billionaire owner of the New York Yankees, died in 2010 when there was no federal estate tax. It is estimated that his family saved around $681 million because he passed away in year 2010. 
On November 15, 2018, the IRS announced the official estate and gift exclusion amounts for 2019 in Revenue Procedure 2018-57. The state tax exemption is $11.4 million per individual, up from $11.18 million in 2018. That means an individual can leave $11.4 million to heirs and pay no federal estate tax, while a married couple with proper planning could transfer $22.8 million tax-free to their children and grandchildren in 2019. If no new tax law is passed, the increased exclusion amounts are scheduled to expire on December 31, 2025, which would mean a reduction in the exclusion amounts to $5 million plus adjustments for inflation. For now, the Republicans are trying to make the new doubled exemption amounts permanent. Their ultimate goal is still to repeal the estate tax. The midterm elections, however, put a damper on the viability of Tax Reform 2.0. In the meantime, the wealthy will continue to plan around the estate tax, reducing their estates with lifetime wealth transfer strategies to keep below the new threshold amount and avoid the 40% federal estate tax. For the super-rich, these numbers represent planning opportunities. For everybody else, they serve as a reminder. Even if you don't have a taxable estate, you still need an estate plan. The Trump tax cuts slash the number of estates subject to the federal estate tax by doubling the exemption amount. So in 2018, there were only an estimated 1,890 taxable estates. That compares with 4,687 taxable estates in 2013, reflecting $5 million exemption and 52,000 taxable estates in year 2000 when the exemption was only $675,000. The $22.8 million exemption per couple isn't automatic. To use your late spouse's unused exemption, a move called portability, you must elect it on the state tax return of the first spouse to die, even when no tax is due. Portability means if the first spouse to die fails to utilize his or her full exclusion amount, the surviving spouse will be able to utilize the first spouse's unused exclusion amount. The problem is, if you don't know what portability is and how to elect it, you could be hit with a surprise federal estate tax bill. That's why it's a good idea to talk to your CPA and or a lawyer. Portability does not apply to generation skip tax and generally no portability of state estate taxes, which I will discuss later. What about the $15,000 gift tax annual exclusion amount? You can give away $15,000 to as many individuals as you would like. A husband and a wife can each make $15,000 gifts. So a couple could make $15,000 gifts to each of their four grandchildren for a total of $120,000. Lifetime gifts beyond the annual exclusion amount count towards the $11.4 million combined estate gift tax exemption. And note, if you live in one of the 17 states or the District of Columbia that levy separate estate and or inheritance tax, there's even more at stake with death tax sometimes starting at the first dollar of an estate. A few states impose inheritance tax, which are different from estate taxes in that they are paid by heirs rather than by the deceased estate. Maryland collects both estate and inheritance taxes. Several states were in line to match the federal exemption amounts for 2018, but state legislators determined the new doubled exemption was just too high. Most states haven't announced their inflation-adjusted numbers yet for 2019. Well, I hope this gave you basic understanding of estate planning, and if you like this video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up.